it's in focus yeah i think it is what is up you guys i hope you're doing well i'm tony fuentes welcome back to my channel and if we're just meeting in this channel i do a lot of tutorials for video and photo editing so if you're interested in those topics consider sticking around and seeing what it's all about so today's video is from the edact series in, which basically consists in us breaking down the style of famous photographers youtubers or digital creators and then in lightroom we're going to try to replicate those tones and learn how to achieve those certain looks or the specific looks. So the purpose is, is for you guys to learn how to use Lightroom or post editing so you can achieve your own personal style in the future. Now, having said that, today's profile is going to be Daniela Pardo style, which is a profile that one of you guys recommended to me in the DMs. Uh, and luckily, I lost the DM. I don't know who sent it to me. So if it was one of you guys, put it down in the comment section down below and also put down any other profile that we want to break down and analyze in this series. Now, you know how this works, guys. We're gonna jump into Instagram, break down the style, see how she suits her photographs, see all the theory behind her color grading. And then in Lightroom, we're gonna turn that theory into practice by creating a preset, editing a photo, and then seeing it, how it performs in different scenarios. Having said that, let's jump into Instagram and break down her style. So this is Daniela Pardo's profile on Instagram, Daniela Pardo with an R at the end, in case you want to support her. And posing to the other profiles that we've broken down in the series, she isn't a photographer, a filmmaker, YouTuber, or digital creator. She's an academic, she studied ancient history and anthropology, and her style is very reminiscent of vintage look. Most of her photographs are in museums or in old places, and it's a very fun style. Now she does have her, her antique shop, which is again, in resemblance to her style. Now, the first th impressions that we have from the style is that it's very brown and it's very consistent throughout his fe her feed. We can scroll down and we can see that her style is basically the same, the same palette or the same color grading palette. This is a very signature type style and a very curated style, basically something like Creative Ryan's style that we broken down the weeks before, which he has one preset that he uses in all of his photographs. This is more so the same case. Now, first of all, it's a very brown style, moody brown style. So that's basically the style that we're gonna achieve. And again, it's a very flat and desaturated style. Now, how does she shoot her photographs? She doesn't have a full camera or an APS-C or a DSLR. She shoots with her iPhone and they're very nice images. Now, remember that iPhones can shoot raw files, which gives us a lot of information and a lot of leeway when we're jumping into post editing and moving the sliders around. So remember to shoot in raw. And that's a reminder that you can shoot with basically any camera, even if it's your phone. It all depends on your creativity, on your composition and the way you capture your scene. Okay, so let's start off by clicking on her portrait over here. We can see that basically everything is completely brown. First of all, the overall exposure. We don't have any whites, completely white on our image or completely black. Well, blacks, we do have pure blacks over here, the same color as the interface of Instagram. But the whites that we have on this image are nothing in comparison to the letters on Instagram over here, which are pure whites. So that's saying that she doesn't have pure whites on her image. And in that way, her images are a bit flat in the highlight roll and in the whites. So that's the thing we have to remember for the tone curve and the basic corrections. Then everything is desaturated, uh, but more so the cold tones are completely gone for most of our images. We don't have any blues, any aquas, any greens, or any purples or magentas. They're basically disappeared. Now, one thing that we have to see is that everything on her image really resembles a very old look. We have the background, the museum in the background, then her attire, and then her bag, then the book over here. Everything is looking quite old, and that's a constant that we're gonna see throughout her feed. We can see that the white pillars in the back over here, they're a bit towards the brownish tone. Everything is tending towards the brownish tone. That's done in the color grading part in combination with the camera calibration to achieve those brownish tones. So we're gonna jump into that part of the color grading to achieve those looks. Then let's scroll on to another one. Uh, we can see that she lives in London, but she's originally from Malaga, but her style is very reminiscent of the architecture in London, the museums in London, and everything is very dim and very desaturated, very old. Here we can see a museum. This one is in Oxford, yep. And normally we would see some reflections, uh, some blue reflections from the lights in the glass over here. Again, they're completely gone, completely desaturated. We're only left with the warmish tones of the wood in the back and then these pillars, normally they're painted green, I think they're also desaturated completely. These butterflies over here, these little boxes that contain the name and species, also in my eyes they were aquas or blues and they're also completely desaturated. So that's the thing that we have to remember. 
Now, one thing that I can notice by scrolling down her feed is that it's a very fun feed, but it's a very balanced feed. You can see that her style basically alters from portrait to other types of photographs, portrait, other types. So in that way, her style isn't very clocked up with a, one specific type of photograph. For example, if you were to upload 15 portraits and then 15 landscapes, it wouldn't be a very balanced feed. So it's a very nice hint that she does. It's a very curated feed, and that's what I'm trying to say. Scrolling down, we can see that basically the story repeats itself. Now in this one, we can see what she does with the greens. And the greens in these pines over here are tending towards the warmish tones. They're not towards the emeralds or through their natural color. They're towards the warmish tones. And also they're very desaturated, just as the grass and every other tree in the background. That's a little hint for the color green part. We want to desaturate and turn the, all the tones into the warmish tones. Over here in this one, what really stands out is that the highlights have this very cream-like color. And again, they're not pure white. We already talked about that. But again, everything is very warm in this scenario. The greens, the greens over here in the sky garden, or I don't know what this is, are also completely desaturated, basically non-existent, and they're taken out of the equation of the relevance of this image. Now, in some cases, she does keep a bit of a green, but that's a very specific case. We want to really desaturate them. And then in specific cases where it's a very important color, we're gonna bring it back. Keep scrolling down and the story completely repeats itself. For example, over here in this Christmasy image, the greens, the not towards the emeralds, the words towards the yellows, and also very desaturated. We're only left with the reddish tones that are a bit desaturated, I have to say, that's done in the camera calibration, but still, it's a very stylized look. Now, the phone booth over here in London, we all know that it's a very vivid red. Over here, it's a bit desaturated, and then we have these trees, which are also completely desaturated. Everything is a bit too brown, and that's basically her style. Those brownish tones are in the highlights, are in the shadows, are in the mid-tones as well. Finally, let's see this one. Again, greens desaturated, desaturated. This one's a bit of, um, towards the darkish mood, but still it's a very reminiscent of her style and really works with her skin tones and with her hair. So I think I have everything I need to really nail down her style. As a little recap, what we want to do is, first of all, the exposure. We want a very flat exposure on our image with no pure whites and bringing up a bit of the shadow so we have a bit more information in that part. Then what we want to do is desaturate basically every single tones, but more so the bluish and the cold tones. We want to bring them down all the way down to um, basically the zero. And then we want to alter every single color towards a bit of a warmish hue to them. Then in the color grading part and the camera can reach in, we can add that brownish moody look, those brownish colors into the shadows, the mid-tones and the highlights. And finally, to put the cherry on top, we want to add a very nice and very um, textured grain into our images to give them that vintage look. So having said that, we're gonna jump into Lightroom, but before that, I'm just gonna remind you that this preset that we're gonna create for the mobile and desktop versions are gonna be in the edit like preset packs, link up here, in case you wanna check it out and support me in these preset packs. Um, they contain every single preset that we've created throughout the series, including Peter McKinnon, Alan Palander, Monadis, Pau Clavero, every single preset that we create in the series, I add it to those preset packs. So if you wanna support me, check them out. Having said that, let's jump into Lightroom. So here in Lightroom, I have all these images. Most of them are shot in overcast day, like these ones, and or in the interiors. And then we have these ones that are very badly exposed on field, but that's the magic of raw photos or raw files that we can bring them back and rescue them in Lightroom. So let's jump into the edit. Let's start off by editing this one and go to the develop tab. Okay, so first of all, this image isn't shot in an overcast day or in the interiors with very diffuse light, but it is on sunset. So we have a very nice warmish cast already in this image. So first of all, what I want to do is make this image a lot more flat because we have a very harsh contrast between the light in the background from the sunset and my clothing over here in the shadow. So what I want to do, remember that white balancing exposure and contrast, I don't like to touch them because those are the values that we're gonna use to adjust this preset to different scenarios or different photographs. So I like to leave them at zero and not include them in the preset. So what we're gonna do, first of all, is bring down the highlights and I'm gonna bring them down so we have a lot more information in the brightest part of our image. Not too much, so we don't have basically any light, but just bring it down ever so slightly. And then the shadows, I'm gonna pull them up just a bit so we have more information in these dark parts of the image, not too much. Yeah, and then the white, once again, whites control the brightest parts of our image. And then we're gonna pull them down, something like that. We don't want to go to extreme, so we don't have any whites. And basically that's done, that's everything for the basic correction. Now presence, clarity, and the haze, we don't want to add any of these that make very harsh looking images. We want to leave them at zero. That will depend on you guys if you want to add them, but I don't 
really like to add them personally. Then here in Vibrance and Saturation, what we want to do is pull down a bit of the saturation, not too much, because remember that we're gonna desaturate everything in over here specifically and also in the camera calibration. So I'm just gonna pull down a bit of the Vibrance. Now Vibrance and Saturation are quite different. I already made a tutorial about that. Uh, I'll link it up here in the cards if you wanna check it out. But in a short way to say it is that Vibrance is a very intelligent tool where it doesn't alter too much of the most important colors of this image. So we're just gonna pull it down ever so slightly to, to a minus four, and then we're gonna jump into the tone curve. Now the tone curve is very important to achieving certain looks because it alters the exposure of the image, but also you can alter the color grading part. So if you wanna dominate that tool and really nail it down, link up here to that video where I explain every detail of it and how to use it. Also I'll link up uh, one for color grading over here and camera calibration in case you wanna check them out. Check them out, pause this video, and then come back and you have a very uh, better understanding of what we're doing right now. So let's start off by point, creating a point in the shadows and a point in the highlights over here. And what we want to do is pull up the shadows just a bit over the line so we have a bit more exposure. And then what we want to do is pull down the highlights down so the image is a lot more flat. Then the whites also gonna pull them down, not too much. We don't wanna go all the way to the posterizing effect, just like that. And maybe the shadows, the blacks, I'm just gonna pull them up just a millimeter over here, something like that. And now the image is a lot more flat. We can see what we're doing by clicking this on and off. I'm just making this image a lot more flat, evening out the exposure. So this image is more reminiscent of her style. So next up, H cell. Now in H cell, what it does, basically we can alter every single color on our image, uh, changing the color, changing the saturation and the luminance in particular. So let's start off by editing the hues or the color. I want to do, first of all, starting off with the greens. Remember, we want them not towards the emeralds. We can see how the grass in the background starts to differ when we move it. We want it towards the warmish tones all the way down to the 100%. Then the yellows also control a lot of the greens, as we can see. We're gonna move them as well towards the negatives. I'm gonna go around minus 50. And then the oranges, I'm just gonna move them ever so slightly down towards the, the negatives. I don't want to move them too much because the skin tones normally are in the orange realm. So if we move the oranges up and down, we may have as a result, uh, very strange skin tones. And then reds, I'm not gonna move them at all. Now, next up, saturation. Now in saturation, remember what we want to do is desaturate all those cool tones. So for example, magentas and purples, we don't have any of those in her style. Then blues, also we're gonna desaturate them, not too much, but we are gonna desaturate them all the way down to the minus 50s just as well as the aquas and the greens as well. Next up, the yellows, remember that they control a lot of the greens or the leaves in our images, so we're gonna pull them down as well. Not too much in this case, because we want to maintain some of those yellowish tones. And then the oranges, we're just gonna pull them down ever so slightly as well. Okay, with Y on our keyboard, with Option, and Y or Alt on our Y if you're on Windows, you can see that the image is looking a lot more sepia, and a lot more desaturated, but still we're missing those brownish tones. So we're gonna add them right now in color grading. So we're gonna jump into color grading. And here we have these three wheels and where we can add a tint to the shadows, to the midtones and to the highlights independently. So we can do it in several manners. For example, we can move around this little point over here and then by pressing shift while we move the center, we can move the saturation part. We can also introduce the values over here or just move them to the left or right so we can alter these values as well. So starting off with the shadows, what we want to add is a reddish tone in the shadows. We're going to combine that with uh, orange and yellow in the other color wheels to create that brown effect. So first of all, we want a reddish tone, uh, not too harsh. We don't want anything too purplish. We can also move the saturation up so we can see what we're working with. And I'm going to go with a reddish tone over here and the saturation, I'm going to pull it down uh, not too much, we don't want it to be too harsh, otherwise in images that we have a lot of shadows, it's going to be completely red, something around the 11%. Okay, next up, midtones. Now in midtones, I'm going to add an orange tone around there, around the 30 in the hue, if you want to nail down that color, and then the saturation, just going to pull it ever so slightly up, to plus 22. Then in the highlights, I'm going to add a sand-like yellow, something like that. So the color is going to be uh, something around those lines. And then just gonna pull up the saturation once again. And then I'm just gonna add a bit of blending. Now the blending tool, what it does is basically uh, the diffuses or makes more rigid the differences between shadows, midtones, and highlights. So if we have it at zero, the cuts are, very, are gonna be very abrupt between the shadows or the tint that we add to the shadows to the midtones and to the midtones to the highlights. If we move it to the 100%, they blend and they mix together to create that color that we want. So we're gonna move it to the positives 
maybe around the 60s percent over here just to make sure that these colors are blending in and create a brownish tint okay next up camera calibration over here we're not quite finished with the brownish tones what we're going to do is just desaturate a bit of the reds and a bit of the greens if you don't know what camera calibration is it's basically altering the base colors which every single pixel on our image is composed of the rgb the red the green and the blue so by altering maybe the reds we're altering yes primarily all the warmish tones but also the opposite in the color wheel and every single color which is composed in larger or you know, lesser manner with reds so what i'm going to do right now is just bring down a bit of the saturation of the reds to make this image a lot more flat around the minus 25 and then the greens as well just going to pull it down slightly around the minus 15 minus 16. now we can see what camera calibration does it just brings down a bit of the saturation and adds that very brownish tint to our image finally we're just going to add a bit of grain to make this image really pop so i'm going to go to effects over here i'm just going to add a grain around the 20 percent something like that not too big if we zoom in we can see that we're doing and there it is but then i'm just going to add the size all the way down to plus 100 to make it very emphatic so if we zoom out it's not very apparent but if we zoom in there's the texture that we're looking for so the preset is basically complete we can see the before and after and now we have those brownish tint and a very flat image so I'm going to save this preset and then we're going to apply it to different scenarios. Maybe we're going to modify it a bit for the other photos. But let's go to the left panel over here. Hit the plus sign on create preset. And then remember white balancing exposure and contrast. We don't want the mark term. Also detail and transform. We're going to omit them. I'm just going to save it. So starting off we have this image of myself here with an architecture book and all the cameras. And let's see how it performs. It's a bit underexposed. So here we have it under the area accuser pack. Daniela Pardo can click on it and immediately we can see how it's a very sepia looking effect. It's quite nice actually. Uh, we can see how the film grain, there it is, it's present. And we're desaturating the blues in the shirt and also in the reflection over here in the camera. So it's looking quite nice. What I would do for this image is add a bit more exposure and bring down a bit of the contrast so the image is a lot more flat than we already had it. But I'm quite happy with the results of this effect. Next up we have this one once again and here there are a lot of greens and aquas in the background so let's apply the preset click on it and now we can see that they're completely gone we can see we don't see any of those aquas or those greens it's a bit too much for you guys you can always pull down a bit of the temperature so they're not too harsh so we have more of a flat brownish tone to everything but still there it is very nice this one of this olympus camera just in a very retro looking fashion let's apply the preset and immediately we can see that it's a very sepia-like tone. Again, if it's too much, you can just bring down a bit of temperature to add a bit of blue, and it's looking a bit better. Another one of this film roll, let's apply the preset, and it's looking fantastic, actually. Maybe in this case, I would add some contrast, yeah, but that's just my personal preference. You can always go with a bit less contrast if you're interested in that. And finally, we have this one of my dog Lupita. I'm just going to pull up the exposure because it's a very underexposed image. And we can see these vibrant greens over here in the background and in the foreground. So let's apply the preset. And it's looking fantastic. We can see now that the greens are more towards the warmish tones and basically completely desaturate. And if we wanted to add a bit more of a flat looking effect, we can bring down a bit of the contrast. And there we have it, this very beautiful portrait of my dog Lupita. And what do you think guys? I think we really nailed down her style. Actually, it's looking quite nice. Now, if you wanted a bit more of a vibrant or a bit more goldish like tones, you can always pull up the temperature instead of pulling it down. And it really adds a bit more of an orangey goldish effect to your images. And remember that this is just my interpretation or my way to achieving those brownish looks. I'm not saying that she does it in this particular manner. I don't have any of her presets or anything like that. It's just how I would do it. And I wanted to share it with you guys so you can learn how to achieve a moody look as well. A moody brown look. And remember that this preset that we just created is in the area I preset pack. Link down below and up here in the cards in case you want to support me. Other than that guys, consider subscribing. Like the video. That actually helps out. Leave a comment down below. And... That's about it, guys. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.